Welcome everybody to today's new demo. I'm really excited about this and I'm really interested to see what you think about this. And this demo is called Snap, Crackle, Pop. And what it is, it's about Paper Artsy, gotta love Paper Artsy, their Crackle Glaze. So the amazing thing about the Crackle Glaze, and I, I would say there's two amazing things about it. The first one is that it's instant. And when I say instant, I don't mean blink and it's there. I mean, three, four, five minutes. So I'm such an impatient artist. I love that. I can move on. The second amazing thing about this is that it creates a relatively speaking smooth surface. You can really easily stamp on it. You can um, use rub-ons on it. It's just smooth. So I'm going to play with it today. I'm going to do some things I've already done in some experiments, but I just want to really quickly show you a sample of Crackle Glaze in action. Well, it's not really in action because it's already done its job. So I look at this, which took me, I don't know, seven or eight minutes with dry time involved. And I just think that is phenomenal. I love the look of the cracks. I love that some cracks are large. I love that some cracks are small. The thing is, is you have some control over that. And I'll explain that. But for a lot of these products, you don't really have full control. And honestly, that just makes it better. You got to let go of control when it comes to mixed media. I also love that it, I don't know, it almost looks like wood to me, wood grain. It is so good. And it's smooth. I mean, it's smooth. I'm not going to say smooth as silk, but it's smooth as paper which is great. So I'm also going to show you what I did with it. So I made some art. I call this thinking of you. So I repeated the background with the same colors and the same process. And then I created the artwork so that you can see there's stamping on this, there's rub-ons on this, the level of clarity you get when you use this smooth surface. So this is called thinking of, and I will put a shout out to Katie Pratit, who's the designer for 49 and Market, because a lot of the add-ons are her designs that I've used my way. All right, so let's get to it. What you need, do you need some form of substrate. Could be wood, could be paper, it could be anything that acrylic paint works on. I am working on Canson artboard. I cut it down, it's like four, I think it's probably the same as this, about four by four and three quarters inches. And I'm going to just choose a background, a color. I am going with Mud Splat, one of my paints from Paper Artsy. I love this as a background. I also think that when it crackles, it brings in that sort of natural woodish tone, which I love. So I'm just gonna go ahead, gonna put a, a, enough paint, not too much. People over pour all the time. And I'm just gonna spread it out and I need it to dry. And that is one key. In order to use this crackle, you need three layers. And I'll tell you the layers in a moment. And each layer, needs to dry fully. One of the beauties of paper artsy paint, the chalk finish, is even in humid climates like New York City where I am, it's chalk paint, it dries so fast. And because I'm drying, I'm sorry, I am painting dry, and I'm not using water when I paint, it's gonna dry super fast. All right, so we got your crackle glaze. You do not need much of this, which is great because it's jar, even if bottle, even if you use a lot of it will last for a while. You just need to put out some. That may even be too much, my friends. And you're basically going to go for the thinnest layer possible. And I'm just taking my palette knife and I'm smoothing it out. And you can see very clearly because it's shiny and wet, you can see it and what part of the surface you have covered with it and what part you haven't. 
So we are going to go and we're just going to keep spreading. And even if I feel like, you know what, I don't have enough, I'm not going to add more. I'm just going to keep working it so that I get it quite thin rather than add more because it just works best with a thin layer. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to take off the excess using the side of the palette knife. And then I'm going to let it dry. Now, here's the third miracle about this product. You can use a heat tool. Let me tell you, with most crackle pastes, this is a glaze, not a paste, but with most crackle pastes, you cannot use a heat tool. I mean, you can, but what it does is it holds the crackle back. You will never get crackle as good if you use a heat tool, but it does not matter with the crackle glaze. Now, one of the things you wanna do is you want to make sure that you have a good contrast for your next layer, because when it crackles, you wanna be able to see the difference. If I had the same color underneath it, why bother crackling it? I think I'm gonna go with turquoise. The one I had used before was Niagara Falls. So it's in the same wheelhouse, it's cool tone, but it's a little darker, a little brighter. All right, so let's see. You gotta be pretty quick and you want this to be pretty thick. The thicker the layer, the bigger the crackle. And that's where you can play. So if you just want nice and fine China crazing crackle, maybe put it on thinner, but just practice. You'll get the hang of it. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm actually going to squeeze it on a palette. Just gonna make it easier for me. And I use a jelly plate as a palette so that I don't either underpour or overpour and have to take the time. And I'm just gonna go. And we are literally gonna sit and watch this in real time. I know a lot of times when you watch things dry on video, it's sped up. We're not gonna speed this up because we do not have to. And what happens is the crackle glaze as the acrylic paint layer on top is drying, pulls it apart. All right, so. This may not be the most exciting until it actually begins to happen. But I promise you, it's amazing. You can paint in one direction. You can paint in different directions. You get different effects. You really do. The crackle, as you can see by this, has some verticality and linearity to it because I painted brush strokes that way. You can put the paint on much more loosely and get a different effect. When you put it on with a sponge, you get a completely different, not a completely different effect, but a, a different effect as well. All right, so do you guys see? It's crackling already. I am just going to say everybody relax, take a sip of coffee, tea, water, and just sit back and watch this magic because I really find this to be magic. It's so instant. So remember the first time or the 3000th time you saw embossing powder melt, how it never loses its charm. That is what is true with this. I mean, you guys, I can't see you, but I'm hoping there are oohs and ahs in every household of anybody watching this, because this is ridiculous. You, you are all seeing that, right? And I promise you, and I am talking, and I am not recording my voice over a recording so that it's as if this fast speeded process is actually going slower. It's just happening. And I am going to continue to just watch it crackle. I find this mesmerizing. I honestly think 
this, if I'm in a bad mood, if I am in a situation where I am losing my mojo, you know, either I'll jelly plate or I will grapple. This is wild, right? You know, it's really quite funny that things as simple as this bring me so much joy. And they really do. The joy that something like this brings me is, is endless. And I really, I do feel like a little kid doing this. You can absolutely hit it at this juncture with a heat tool and make it go even faster. And perhaps I would do that. But one of the things that I wanted to do on this video was not use the heat tool. So you saw the live action demo video because that's where this product in my mind really shines. Now, what I wanna do before I move on is I wanna take out, yes, sandpaper. You can also use a sanding block and um, I'm using fine grit sandpaper because I don't want something too harsh. Before the paint is really, really dry, maybe when it's a little tacky, you can also go to town with a sanding block or paper. And for me, because I love the idea of a frame, anyone who knows me, the edge or frame element of a piece of art is really important to me. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to help it along a little bit. Now you gotta know you have barely any control when you do it this way. So somebody out there is probably freaking out because you know I'm quote unquote ruining the crackle. I'm really trying to stay mostly at the edge. Um, but you know, with the sandpaper, um, you might have even a little less control than a sanding block. But you do that, and you can pull out even more grain. Paper artsy crackle glaze. It's good stuff. If you play with this crackle, let me know. Um, uh, tag me so I can see what you do with it. And I will talk to you all soon. Thank you. Be well, guys.